Hi, welcome back to MBTV. We're going to be covering the INTJ personality in this video about INTJs, dating, relationships, love, and compatibility. INTJs are a little different when it comes to uh, romance and compatibility than maybe some other types. Um, like the INFJ, like a lot of NTs actually, intuitive thinkers, they're in for the long haul. They are strategic and every action they, they take signifies something for the betterment of the experience that they have with somebody in particular. And uh, they're very logical. You know, I'm not going to go into a full analysis of the INTJ, uh, but uh, their function stackings are uh, NI. Uh, T E F I S E. What you have here is for the unconscious. Uh, I want to go over what the functions may relate to in, you know, in the world of romance. So when you take a look at an INTJ, INTJ's function stacking. Um, when you look at N I and you look at T E, and you 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 see you you have a, a individual who's very strategic with with their lifestyle and their interpersonal relationships right? What logically makes sense and what makes sense for the long haul. Uh, so you're going to see a lot of INTJs in, 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 you know, while dating or in relationships, really orchestrating and strategizing um, long term with somebody. And you're going to see that a lot of these individuals, a lot of these INTJs, guy or girl, what they say about the future is their way of expressing to you, you know, what's, you know, how they're feeling, right? So, if you take a look at how an INTJ expresses, it's either through, you know, their intuition, how they how they kind of see the world, or how they where they see you and the INTJ, or you and somebody else if you're an INTJ, the direction in which you're going, and so the INTJ will do, will create actions uh, that signify long term results, right? Like getting married, you know, here's a ring, or here's flowers, or here's something, you know, something that will will generate the idea that, hey, this is my way of expressing to you that I see us going forward in the long term. It may be giving you something physically. It may, it, you know, the INTJ may write you something. The, I, uh, the INTJ may really value communication. And so actually what, what you see here is with an INTJ, when an INTJ actually starts to really invest uh, in somebody, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, INTJs, in the comments below, you know, you pretty much open, you open yourself up 100%. You know, when you really value this person, you really see it going long term and you actually make that committed effort and you think that everything's uh, matching up, then, you know, you can, you can actually become very sensitive as an INTJ. Um, as an INTJ, you know, INTJs are not normally sensitive, but when they're in this very, in this interpersonal setting, uh, they can very well be. And so this is a different side to the INTJ. The INTJ is very loyal, very endearing, very communicating, very trustworthy, uh, very critical and serious about the, the couple of which they became, the INTJ and whoever else. And so you actually see INTJs a lot of the time really wanting to work on personal growth, working forward, uh, moving forward with the relationship, you know, almost perfecting the relationship in a sense and looking for the best ways to do in the in the uh, relationship. And so in every regard, uh, intimately and, and just, you know, every day, your everyday uh, couple with, you know, an INTJ, you know, INTJs try to maximize and create more efficiency within uh, relationships. And so um, going back to the, the function stacking, um, how, how, INTJs or what INTJs or, or somebody who dates an INTJ should be aware of is that an INTJ, you know, who actually does express, we'll take a look at their seventh function, you know, extroverted feeling, you know, this is something totally foreign to them and they use this as a surface. So what I want to say to INTJs when they're, while they're dating, and I'll start from dating to relationships, is don't, don't feel the need to, you know, put on a face when you're out and dating. You don't need to be this fun, lively, energetic not, you know, person who's not you. You don't need to be the ESFP. You don't need to be the ENFJ. 
You can just be you. Be you, be introverted. Because guess what? Who you normally are is what's going to... What the people are going to be attracted to who you really are. You know, the idea is to really understand your own frame. To really understand uh, who you are, what you have to offer, what you have to give to the table. And, you know, just be yourself and and kind of really, you know, don't, you know, don't go down the manipulative route. Don't go down the skeptical route, right? Be very open when, when it comes to dating. Be very present, right? That's something that you may struggle with. Similarly, uh, similar to the INFJ, both INFJ and INTJ have extrovert sensing as their inferior, which pretty much means that it's their orientation of growth, which means that you want to do more activities in which or more experiences with others in which uh, you, you you value. Not only is this this function, extroverted sensing, not in, in your in your consciousness, it's not very you're not very aware of your sensing, but it's it's how you can you can harness sensing in dating in a sense that you can take advantage of you're always gonna be future oriented. You're always gonna be very strategic when it comes to finding somebody, you know, to share your life with. That's not gonna change, but how you enjoy yourself in the present moment with while exploring this long-term goal uh, with others in the present moment is is that much more important. So remember that there's going to be a time to be skeptical. There's going to be a time to evaluate, but just have fun in the moment. Explore and date and kind of see where things go and enjoy your time for as it is in that moment. Um, and kind of orient yourself towards, yeah, enjoying, you know, your time. And, you know, however that, however you tend to express that with the things you like to do. You know, I know INTJs, they, they do value uh, great conversation. You know, they value, you know, commitment and they value somebody who may kind of show a side that's not normally them, like being with an extrovert. And so... What I would have to say to kind of end off like dating advice for an INTJ is to A, get out there. B, don't be afraid to try new experience, uh, experiences. Uh, C, uh, put, uh, put off the skepticism uh, for a little bit. And D, remember that you always have a long-term agenda. But remember to enjoy things for the moment and to explore the things that you'd want to do and, and, and gain new experiences, right? You know, as an INTJ, you don't have extroverted intuition in your first stacking. So you use extroverted intuition in very, um, you use extroverted sensing, uh, extroverted intuition in very particular ways, right? You have to remember in the shadow functions, you always use these functions in very particular ways. Extroverted intuition just so happens to be your fifth function, right? Which is on like the, pretty much outside the layer of, of your extroverted sensing. So what I would say is, and we'll get into this in a second, um, but explore the new opportunities that you will discover with with the experiences that you should be doing, right? And explore the be in the moment with the experiences that you have with people, and allow that to open up different doorways to new opportunities for you. And so you may realize that upon exploring the experiences you want, which may lead to different experiences that are new for you. You may find that this is the gray area in which you can really find um, very meaningful relationships and friendships in your life. Exploring what you like to do, doing those situations, those experiences, and seeing where those lead. So as I was just mentioning in the dating, uh, in relationships, um, INTJs can be very optimizing. Like I, like I mentioned earlier, they want to perfect their relationships communicatively, intimately, overall, generally. You know, they strive for personal growth in relationships. They really value communication. Um, INTJs definitely value communication. And uh, depending on what gender you're working with, I mean, overall, INTJs are pretty um, powerful types. They're very logical. They're very, con not I wouldn't say controlling. They could be controlling. Um, but I'm not going to I'm not gonna necessarily put that generalization on them. Um, but they, they, can, they tend to be a very powerful type. Um, they can appear cold, but um, this is just because, you know, uh, INTJs have certain outlets in which they can, um, you know, express their feelings, you know, and you have to remember an INTJ, um, ha their introverted feeling is their tertiary function, so it's always kind of in and out 
And so I always, I'm always going to say that in and out. I always call it tertiary function in and out function because, um, you have to remember that, um, like I really type, you know, uh, the tertiary function is kind of like, we want it more in our life, but we struggle to keep it present. Right. So for me being an ENFJ, you know, uh, this, that is SE that's extrovert sensing. So I kind of struggle to, you know, have control over my, you know, my sensory environment and being aware and alert of things, you know, that's how, you know, even worse so for INTJs and INFJs having uh, extrovert sensing as they're inferior, INTJs, they have introverted feelings, so they're always kind of in and out and trying to understand and get a hold of their feelings, and then it goes away, maybe it comes back, so, or just to have that control over them or to express it more and to just be in their feelings more and how they, in a, and how people and situations mean and what situations mean to them um what they value and 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 really creating that self-value um so remember that a really great way to exercise your introverted feeling if you're an intj in a relationship is to have this come out in either conversations you really like uh debates or topics that you really are passionate about the world or or the way you see the world or through how you see the other person express your feelings through what that person means to you long term or how you logically see each other right there's a lot of expression that could be there and uh don't forget that in a relationship with uh, an intj it's really important to not only experience and not to just kind of let things settle right and just kind of hang out and, and kind of do the same old thing but to experience to get out there to get out of your comfort zone to get out there and not only explore things that you like to do but things that your your significant other would like to do and and explore the new experiences out there and be open to new experiences it's not always about what you know to be fitting in that box and everything being one big equation to how your relationship works discover that new variables can actually you know bring more to the table right that variables such as new experiences outside of what you normally like to do can actually add to the awareness and the power of your relationships. Usually uh, an INTJ will have a love language of either communication, um, communication touch, and I'm just going off of what I've seen. You know, this can obviously vary, um, and I'm bringing up the five, lo uh, five, lo uh, five love languages here. Um, you know, I've seen mostly communication. Uh, touch is important, but I'd say communication, touch, and quality time, though this may vary. And it's important to understand that there's more to a relationship than the dynamics of the variables that you naturally see if you're an INTJ. You have to remember that there's all there's the factor of your, your, your mate needing love in their own specific way. Your mate needs, you know, or if you're dating an INTJ, vice versa, um, you know, the function stacking, uh, the function stack, of each type orients uh, or direct is it directs to a certain kind of need or necessity for each kind of type of person, right? So for an INTJ, it's going to be a lot of communication, a lot of going over thoughts and insights and how you, know, you logically see the world and, and your ethics or however that might play out and your value systems to those ethics and, lo and logical systems for the INTJ. And so communication is really important for the INTJ. I don't think they would be able to not be able to express this with somebody that they want to be with long term. This is important for them. And so for that matter, I'm going to segue into, uh, you know, just so you know, I didn't bring up introversion uh, just because that's, you know, INTJs are just who you are and that, uh, you know, just the advice generally is to not just be so closed off um, and to, event, you know, at some point express in a way that you know, your partner will may need, may or may or not need. Uh, so I just want to touch up on that real quick. But segue, uh, I'm going to segue into types that are um, preferable or types that have uh, a, a growth uh, aspect to it. Um, so types for growth for the INTJ. We have INTJ, INFJ, ENTJ, and ENFJ. All these types value at least... Um, introverted intuition and extroverted sensing. For the INTJ, ENTJ coupling, you have more of a friend-like polarity. You have two really good best friend type uh, couplings here. 
So for as far as growth wise, ENTJs are more action driven, the more into getting things done, whereas INTJs are maybe a little bit more on the reserve side and both kind of will maintenance the, the relationship differently um, with their orientations of extrovert thinking and introverted intuition in different areas of their life. Whereas the INTJ uses introverted intuition to really uh, understand and perceive the world, ENTJs will want to be in the environment and bring the, the relationship into, the, into life, right? And so uh, both of those types really regard intellectual stimulation. They both value doing things and, and being very, I guess, you know, organized and very expressive when it comes to their logic. And, you know, this is actually a pretty good duo. You know, any type that has, you know, introverted and extroverted, like the INTJ and ENT, uh, ENTJ, are pretty good types to couple with if that's the preferred route. This is the, the value desire where these, these types here, the ENTJ, INTJ, ENFJ, INFJ, these are all types where they kind of value the same kind of ways of thinking, uh, whereas, you know, you have intro, introverted intuition in the mix. So even though there's different ways that each type uses intuition in this way differently in life, it's still a preferred function. It's still something very present in their life, whether it just be a tool or an actual way of existing uh, mentally and throughout life. And so the INFJ and the ENFJ, you have this uh, shown this, you know, you see the, the NI augmenting to a different route than how an ENTJ or an INTJ would use NI. And so for an INFJ, INTJ uh, coupling, you actually have a lot of the sameness that you might think another INTJ and INTJ relationship would have, except the INFJ is more oriented towards people and um, their vision and, you know, helping people in life and bringing that liveliness and being, um, you know, and having a lot of, you know, their, their life includes just people and, and always getting to know people and, and helping people, uh, you know, INFJs are very support oriented and um, they, they do value intellectual stimulation as much as the INTJ does. They both value communication, trust and loyalty and commitment and this is something they strive for long they both strive for long term and so if you have an INTJ INFJ pairing what you have is two individuals who really appreciate the fact that they both value the long term and so this may be the overwhelming energy of the relationship uh, you may you may have two individuals who are very set on the long term goal they see the the consistency that each have on one another and that they're both they both can very much explore life uh, in a different way, but with the same orientation of functions. Um, and so, yes, you know, they, they both have expert sensing as their inferior. Um, they both have internet intuition as their, their, their primary. And then they have, you know, different routes for uh, the next two uh, functions. You have INFJ, you have FE uh, as their judging function. And then you have uh, TI, whereas for an INTJ, you have. Um, extroverted thinking and so their judging preferences are different in reality but at the end of the day they still kind of have this necessity for intuition which kind of is very uh, complementary and for the ENFJ again you have that introverted uh, intuition but then in just in general you have just the NI and the SE that are uh, in the same stacking uh, but in different uh, routes but uh, this kind of opens up the INTJ to new experiences similarly to a different understanding of feeling versus expressing, um, where this may be a little bit foreign to the INTJ. This is not necessarily a preferred uh, coupling, but you can actually, this, this coupling can learn a lot from each other when it comes to uh, life and when it comes to understanding how people can see the world in different ways, right? The INTJ just totally sees the world in a logical, very realist mentality versus the, I, uh, the ENFJ is very idealist. INFJ and the ENFJ are very idealist, optimistic. And so you have two different routes of pursuing life with, again, introverted intuition. And again, two different judging functions, two different ways of being in the environment, one for harmonizing and making sense of the outer environment with people and one outer, outer environment with logic. And so that's a really interesting pairing. Next, we have the ESFP, which is opposite. So you know, similarly to a ENFJ 
IS, uh, ISTP relationship. You have uh, INTJ and ESFP. This is a very interesting duo because you have the same function stacking reversed. So ESFP will be extroverted sensing, introverted feeling, and then so on. And so what you actually have is a type that is very out, like, like very extroverted, very um, into people and uh, performing and expressing and expressing. And so this is actually a really great coupling for an INTJ, a very good combination, because this will actually kind of allow the INTJ to be with somebody who can share similar values and share life in a similar way, um, but like polar, with polar dominance. So, you know, how an, e, uh, an INTJ doesn't really, not as, not, as, not necessarily get out as much, but an ESFP brings that extrovert sensing out of uh, the INTJ, get, gets, the INT, gets the INTJ out a little bit more. Whereas the INTJ is a little bit more grounded. So you have one type that's very grounded and one type that's very not, I wouldn't say out there or bubbly or in the sky, but the INTJ is very grounded versus the ESFP is very always going out, needing that social stimulation. And so the idea is that as both of these types get more grounded and balanced, um, they can have more harmony within the relationship as they get older. And so this would be a really great coupling if the INTJ really wanted to explore, uh, you know, life experience, if they wanted to explore their feelings, ironically enough, the INTJ can just open up to the ESFP and then they can just get into that more. Um, though all types have their, their negatives and positives, um, you know, this, is, this could be a very intense pairing, both constructive or deconstructively. Uh, if both types are not in a good place, um, and if this is not a kind of desire that both types prefer, meaning opposites. If they don't desire this kind of opposite orientation, both types can kind of feel at not at ease or that there's something off the relationship or that they're desiring something else. So with all these different types, not only am I talking about the areas of growth, but these are all different areas of, 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 a desi of desires that somebody could have. So the first kind of four types that we talked about were the same value. The next type underneath that is actually like the 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 opposite, right? So now we have the dual, which is the uh, ENTP. And so in this kind of relationship, you have same same valuing um, of of functions, except in different orientations, introverted and extroverted. And so for the introverted uh, intuition for the INTJ, you have uh, extroverted intuitive for the ENTP. What you actually have here is a lot of uh, new opportunity coming up. Because you have to remember, um, for both types, I believe, you know, for an INTJ, NE, extrovert intuition, is their fifth function. So this is within the area of growth for the INTJ in a different way. This is, again, exploring new opportunities, getting out there, getting life experience, exploring new ideas, and building on frameworks that they have with somebody who is very also very logical and very intuitive, but just in different routes. And so... The INTJ may really find this kind of coupling stimulating because both types very desperately need um, intuitive um, understanding and, and to talk about intuition with themselves because um, it's what they value. So you have a valuing, um, a valuing function stacking all the way down to sensing. And so uh, this is a very complementary typing uh, couple. And so what I would say is for the ENTP, is uh, the ENTP and INTJ couple is just uh, explore this type coupling see if it's for you you know it's not necessarily everybody's cup of tea um, but for the INTJ uh, they may appreciate this coupling because it get, kind of gets everything that they would want out of a relationship and a little bit more uh, going down to opportunity now both types they actually have that weak spot area for sensing, but as far as what I can see, um, this type may be, this type coupling may be very beneficial, except when it comes to this, you know, being into the environment. Um, both of these types may struggle with environmental factors together, getting out there, not, you know, um, you know, the struggle between new experiences and really getting out there and exploring new opportunities and uh, creating those memories together, experiencing new things. 
So um, I would say that this would be a good coupling for a lot of different ways, uh, reasons. Similarly, actually, you have ENTPs who actually uh, value um, or try to stay as much in, in, their, in their world for feeling as the INTJ. They both struggle with feeling as well. So they, they kind of can understand the same struggle, but in different ways. So this type might be very complimentary for, for some INTJs and it may not for others. Uh, the next type is we have another very good combination, the ENFP and INTJ. And so what you have here is actually, um, you actually have a lot of similar uh, characteristics. You have, again, both valuing extroverted intuition and just both different orientations of intuition, <laughs> which is very important. ENFP is way more, I guess, bubbly and out there and, and less grounded. So it's similar to the ESFP uh, dichotomy. But in this kind of uh, stacking, you see a little bit more similarity with um, you see a little bit more similarity with uh, with not as much being intuitively stimulated. Yes, being intuitively intuitively stimulated. What am I saying? Um, both are very interested in intuition. Um, both are very interested. In, except the only difference is the ENFP is going to be way more centered with their feeling than the INTJ is. Now this was a really great area for how, for growth for an INTJ if they're if they're if the INTJ is really interested in and in, or is balanced themselves in feeling, this is gonna be a very appreciative coupling as well. Not only will both these types together be experiencing new things together, getting the INTJ out there and for the ENFP a little bit more grounded uh, nature, but you have a type coupling that is really uh, understanding of one another, uh, the ENFP and the INTJ when it comes to feelings. So it may be some resistance because of the way that both types see the world, though they both have TE, um, extroverted logic, uh, ENFPs are more geared towards people and INTJs are usually or not, uh, depending on what their purpose is. You know, ENFPs may have a lot of different opportunities that they want to explore and the INTJ will be more focused on being much more efficient and accurate. And so, you know, as ENFPs explore their life purpose throughout life and really change fields all the time, you know, there's going to be there's going to be this kind of need for comfortability from the INTJ in that regard. But aside from that, this is a great coupling because of ex not only just exploring new opportunities, but because this kind of gives the INTJ a halfway point between understanding their own logical framework within somebody else but then having a different uh, orientation for people and so this is a this is almost as if an INTJ were, was augmented towards people in this relationship you know ENFP can give this kind of idea this I this methodology of hey this is what you know you know I'm kind of what you'd look like if you focused and actually valued the importance on getting to know people and putting more of an emphasis on people and so for the ENFP, uh, this can be a very explosive coupling. It can be very intimate as, as well as the ESFP uh, and the ENTP. All these types can be very intense and explosive, depending on if this desire factor is there. Um, and then at last, we have two types that are, again, they're coming up because they have this sensing fixation. And you have the ESTP, and you have the... Uh, you have the ESTP and you have the ESFP once again uh, to fixate on that inferior uh, SE, extroverted sensing. And so uh, in this pairing, you have two different, totally different ways of being as far as the ESTP goes. We already went over the ESFP. But the ESTP is really about, you know, experiencing now, learning later, and then feeling later, and then understanding where all this is going in the future later. <laughs> Uh, which is very different than the uh, the the uh, INTJ. The INTJ wants to know where this is going uh, way before they start experiencing, and so you know there may be a lot of uh, there may be a lot of intensity between this typing because this type coupling because you know the ESTP really draws out the INTJ and like uh, can really get this INTJ moving into creating actions for themselves and you know, get them out of their heads, get them into moving, doing things, doing different things, failing and learning and failing and learning uh, within different routes. So this may be a very intense, though may not be desired, 
amongst a lot of INTJs, this may be a desired few. So I would check out uh, ESTPs as well. Some areas of growth that I have here for the INTJ uh, is, you know, feelings and, and being sensitive. Um, you know, remember that, you know, not everybody's out to get you. Not everybody's out to take advantage of you know, your feelings and take advantage of you and your being, you know, you can open up to people, you know, I would just kind of get gain more perspective from uh, dominant feelers and see how they trust and be and authenticate themselves with others and are able to be vulnerable uh, with their feelings and their sensitivities. You have over evaluating. So INTJs can really be overbearing in this regard uh, to be over evaluating to always evaluate every situation to be efficient to always want more to be more optimizing uh, with within each situation it doesn't always have to be the case the idea is that you want to enjoy the present moment let loose a little bit and let experiences come your way you know this is kind of tapping into extroverted intuition a little bit you know you want there to be opportunity in, in a great area a, a wiggle room if you may uh, to really get that flexibility in your life, as you, especially as you grow older, uh, you will definitely see flexibility uh, amongst you know your interpersonal relationships. Don't hold back, and um, remember that not everybody's perfect. You know, there's a difference between a standard, and there's a difference between accepting people for who they are. And for as long as that you see long term uh, with people uh, that are close to you, that's one thing. But accepting people for who they are is just a part of life. You know, you, you can never really control necessarily, you can never really control when somebody's going to, you know, leave or come into your life. So always appreciate the moments you have with others and remember uh, that it all fits in the grand picture of things. So I hope you like this video um, on INTJs. You know, I went over a lot, you know, and believe me, you know, I didn't want to make, the, make this video this long, but there's a lot to get to in this video. Um, so by all means, um, if you liked this video and you appreciated, uh, the content, please like, and subscribe and comment and do all those wonderful things. Um, you know, there's still more coming out in this video series. I already did the INFJ and the INTP. Please, if you can, if you like MBTV's comment, please, uh, not only just subscribe, but if you could donate at least a dollar to our patron, um, you know, we are growing, expanding and taking on more projects and that's all the benefit for you guys. And um, Patreon is just pretty much a support service for us where you can donate to us and, you know, you can actually get rewards in return. So I would check this out in the description below. Aside from that, if you feel like you are experiencing kind of a drought in your dating life or you feel like your dating life could be better and, you know, you just don't know uh, how to pursue dating uh, in the world as it is now in the society we live in, uh, I do dating coaching and relationship coaching. So if you feel the need to uh, explore that, you can always uh, reach out to me and uh, we can talk about it and see uh, the be what, what fits the best direction for you. And we also have NLP services now. Uh, Damon is now an NLP master practitioner. And so he's, I think he's a master practitioner in both MBTI and NLP. So yeah, I would explore that as well. But Damon, if you're interested in working on yourself, we're both coaches in different regards and as usual Trey is an Enneagram expert so if you need help with life purpose uh, you can definitely reach out to him as well and he can help you out and so that's pretty much it for now stay tuned join our MBTI Slack chat as well uh, our MBTI chat room service and our forums that are growing uh, we'd love to see you there and I love seeing everybody on the YouTube comments but there's an easier place for everybody to talk to so join the MBTI uh, chat rooms we have called Slack chat uh, there's a link down below in the description for all this stuff. And so I hope I see more of you. And uh, that's pretty much it. I will see you next time.